So first things first. Homework. Your homework was page two to page the top of page five. If you need a handout, I have extra copies here. Please come and take one. OK, page two. Number three, a lot of the people in my class, so this is more than one person, so works should be work, no S, during the day, and same thing for this one, attend, no S, class in the evening. Number four, Many of the satellites orbiting the Earth, again, many is more than one. So the is should be are, are used for communications. Number five, the news about the long range effects of air pollution on the development of children's lungs. This is the subject. It's a very long subject. Now, news is singular. I know it ends with an S, but it's singular. There is only one. Uh, so this sentence is correct. This sentence does not have any problems. Six. Studying a foreign language often. OK, so in this case. The subject is studying a foreign language. This action is your subject. We'll talk about this later in the semester. Um, when you have ING, this kind of action as your subject, it is always singular, always only one. So often leads. Please add the S. Leads students to learn about the culture of the countries where it is spoken. Seven, one of the most common names for dogs in the United States. One of, so this is also singular. So R should be is. Is Rover. That's not true. By the way, this textbook is very old, so Rover is no longer a common name for dogs. Eight, a number of planes were delayed due to the snowstorm in Denver. A number of is more than one, so were is correct. This sentence is correct. Nine. Most of the mountain peaks in the Himalayan range, most is more than one, so this is should be R. R covered with snow the year round. 10. The number of passengers affected by the delays was great. The number of is only one number. Now, so, so this sentence is correct. Was is singular, this is correct. Now, if the sentence had said a number of, a number means more than one. Because if there's only one, you would just say a passenger. So if you need to add a number, it's always more than one. But it, in this sentence, it says the number. So you only have one number. Therefore, this sentence is singular. 11, 75% of the people in New York City, 75% is more than 1%. So this should be live, no S. 
in upstairs apartments, not on the ground floor. In English, there is only one singular one. If you have more than one or you have less than one, it is always plural. If you have zero, it is plural. Only one is singular. And as with every other rule in English, there is one exception. The exception is the police. The police is always plural. You always say the police are. Question? Plural just means more than one. Like 多数, 复数. Okay? So singular is Dan Shu. Okay, we'll talk about it later. Uh, so 75% is more than 1% and it is less than 100%. So whether you, you think it's more or less, it is plural. 12. Approximately 76%, so you know uh, that this. Okay, approximately 76% of all the data in computers around the world is in English. This sentence is correct because data is uncountable. There is no plural of data. When you see the word data, it is always singular in American English. In British English, they say that data is always plural. Uh, but in American English, it's always singular. Yes. Right. So usually when you have data, it's not one thing, right? So it's kind of like clothing. Clothing is also always singular. If you want to count clothing, you have to say a piece of clothing. If you want to count data, you have to say a data point. But data in general is singular. So it doesn't matter how many percents you have. If the noun is uncountable, like data, it is always singular. 13, unless there are a profound and extensive reform. OK, reform is singular. So this should be is, unless there is. A uh, profound and extensive reform of government policies in the near future. The economic conditions in that country will continue to deteriorate. 14. While I was in Paris, some of the best food I found. This should be was because food is uncountable. You cannot count food. If you try to count food, you have to say a piece of food. So again, it doesn't matter if this says some because the noun itself is uncountable. It is always singular. Some of the best food I found was not at the well known eating places, but in small out of the way cafes. OK, do you have questions about page two? You'll notice that um, some of the answers depend on ideas that were not mentioned in class last week. This is normal. As I mentioned earlier uh, la last time, English is full of exceptions and grammar can be very complicated and advanced. So during the introductions, I will give you the basic ideas and the basic logic. And we'll use the practice questions to look at individual examples and individual cases. So don't worry if 
you miss some of the questions. These are also to help you learn. Right, we're learning by doing. These questions are not to test you. That's the exam. Practice questions are to help you learn. OK, so no questions about page two. OK, let's move on to page three. Elephants, uh, number two, elephants are large animals. Number three. Your heart beats faster, one heart, so the verb has to end with S. Number four, healthy hearts need no S. Five, every child in the class knows. Every means each one, every single child. So every is always singular. Every child knows. Um, and we will talk about that. In the second half of the semester six, some of the magazines, some right more than one. Seven, a number of the students in my class are. As I just said, a number of means more than one. Eight, one of my favorite subjects in school is algebra. So yes, the subject is one, so the verb is is. This part is correct, but this word subject should be plural. One of, right, out of many, one. So you have to have many. Nine, there are many different kinds of insects in the world. Many, so kind has to be plural. And if kind uh, is plural, then this verb is should also be are. But the word insects, it could be singular, it could be plural. It depends on what you're talking about. Um, because it's talking about kinds of things. So if you're thinking about these things in terms of categories, there are different categories, then the big overall category is insect. And when you talk about abstract categories, uh, they can be uncountable. But if you're thinking about actual insects and you're thinking about the hundreds and millions of insects in the world and you're trying to divide them into kinds, then if you're thinking about actual concrete insects, then you would want to count them and it would be plural. Yeah, again, we'll talk about this more in the second half of the semester. 10, writing compositions is difficult for me. This is one action. Writing compositions is one action, one subject. 11, the United States has. This is a trick question. Before the American Civil War before 1865, people did say the United States have. But after the Civil War, in order to emphasize that this is one united country, people started saying the United States has one country. 12. Most of the movie, so it's one movie, therefore this is singular, takes. So yes, it does say most of, but because you're only talking about one movie, uh, it is still singular. 
13. Most of the people in my factory division. So this is plural most and people. So this should be like. And get along with one another. But a few of the workers. A few of is already more than one. And if you take if you have a group and you can take out a few, then the group must be more than one. So the workers. And if this is plural, then this should also be plural. Don't. Don't fit in with the rest of us very well. Questions about the top half of page three? Okay. Which one? Uh, okay, talk to me during the break. Number three, okay. You, there's one heart, right? Your heart, you only have one heart unless you're Doctor Who. Uh, and so the verb has to end with S. So it beats. Okay. Okay, other questions about this part? Okay, second half. Harry's birthday is tomorrow. He will be. No S. When you use the future tense, there is no situation where you will have to add S to will. You only add S when it's in the present tense. And it's third person. So he, she, it. But not future, only present. Two, the store will stay open. Three, 17 people will be. Right? If it's will stay, then it's will be. Will plus the original form of the verb. Four, the new senator will make her first speech in Congress tomorrow. This sentence is correct. Five, our teacher won't be here tomorrow, will not be here tomorrow. Um, you will see the word do, doesn't, or don't when something happens to the sentence and you need another verb or like um, when you're asking a question. In this case, there's nothing special happening with the sentence. It's simply a uh, simple future. Our teacher will not be here tomorrow. Six, will you call me tonight? This sentence is correct. When we ask a question, a yes or no question, we move the first word in the verb cluster to the front. So in this sentence, the subject is you and the verb cluster is will call, two words. So to form a question, we take the first word of all of the words in the main verb and we move it to the front. So will call, two words, move the first word will, to the front, and that gives you a yes or no question. Okay, questions about this part? All right, page four. Now it gets harder. There are 11 mistakes. The first is already corrected. Okay, so there are 10 more mistakes. August 20, I am writing these words in English because I need the practice. At this moment, I am waiting to get on an airplane. I'm on my way to a year of study at Columbia University in the United States. Oh wait, no, the first one is here, so we can look after this. I am looking forward to being there, but I am also a little afraid. What do I find when I will get to America? No, what will I find when I get? to America. 
So the will is in the wrong place. What will I find when I get to America? When is already telling you that something has not happened yet. So you don't need to point out that it may happen in the future. In other words, when is already a kind of future. So you don't need to say when I will. Will the Americans be arrogant and unfriendly? Will I make any friends? Will I be happy? She, it's a she, right? Oh, okay. I don't know. The, the, my roommate, Susan. Okay. It's probably a woman. Uh, so the writer is not asking about now, right? She's asking about when she gets there. So it's not, am I happy? It's, will I be happy? Now, again, just a reminder to form a question. You move the first verb to the front. So the sentence is, I will be happy. But the question is to move. The first part of the verb to the front, so it's. Will I be happy? Terrible font. It's also not a very good fun. There we go. OK, so will I be happy? My best friend back home in Nigeria said you. You don't make any real friends when you'll be there. That's a very negative thing to say. You OK, so assuming that her friend is being negative, it should be you. Won't make any real friends when you are there. But then sh she says, I am not so sure. I guess I will find out. OK, yeah, so let's just say she has a very negative friend. Uh, you won't when you are there, and then I will find out. September 20. I have been here in New York for a month now, and I have found that things are a lot different from what I expected. The majority of people here are friendly. They go out of their way to help you if you need it, and my American friends invite me to go places. Soon. Soon means not yet. Soon means future. Soon I will go hiking with a group from my dormitory. You can also say I am going hiking. So you have two options. Continuing, two of the ideas I had about the United States, however, seem to be true. One is that Americans pay more attention to rules than people do in Nigeria. For example, American drivers seem to obey, not will. Here the author is talking about a general situation. Generally, she says, Americans pay more attention to the rules. So when she's talking in this paragraph like this about people generally, there is no question of time, past, present, future. It's generally, like always. And for that, in English, we use the simple present. So as it says here, is simple present. And so here, seem to obey, no will just seem to obey. 
uh, more often than Nigerian drivers do. The other idea is about the American family. In Nigeria, the family is very important, but some Nigerian people think the family means nothing in the US. I think it might be true since my American friends almost never mention their parents or their brothers and sisters. Anyway, I'm going to have a chance to see a real American family. I am going to, so this is the future. Therefore, this should be, I will go, or I am going uh, with my roommate Susan to spend Thanksgiving break with her family in Pennsylvania. When I see her family, again, when, so this is in the future, maybe I am going to understand, maybe I'm going to, yeah, 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 so this is correct. I'm going to is also future. Okay, questions about this page? Yes. You can, yes. I will and I am going are interchangeable most of the time. There is a small difference. And it's one of those advanced grammar concepts. Um, so this will not be on the test. If on the test I ask you, is this future? will and be going to will both count but there is a small difference and this is going to take me like five minutes to explain okay so in very formal, proper, traditional, old fashioned English. If you use the future tense for second person or third person, you use the word will. But if you use the future tense for the first person, use the word shall. Today, nobody really uses the word shall anymore. So this is just for your information. The reason there is this separation is because if you flip it. Um, OK, so the word will. Um, it also is connected to the idea of intention. Um, the, it, the word will today is still sometimes used with that idea. So for example, a last will and testament is the document that you leave behind after your death, yiju. And the idea is you testify, you authorize, zenming, that this is what you want to happen. This is your intention. So will is connected with intention. So if you say I will, it means that you it's not neutral. There's an idea that you are determined to do something. You have decided and you will do it. Same thing if you use shall for second or third person. If you say you shall, that is an order. You are telling somebody you must do this. And there is an example in the movie Lord of the Rings, uh, Mo Jie, the first one. So like the group are underground in like this huge cavern and they're being chased by a fiery monster and they're crossing a bridge. Did, have you guys seen Lord of the Rings? Yeah, okay, so they're crossing this underground bridge, right? Everybody goes across and then Gandalf stays behind, turns around, and destroys the bridge, and the monster and Gandalf both fall into whatever. Before he destroys the bridge, Gandalf says one line. He says, you shall not pass. Shall, used for second or third person, is also an order. So Gandalf isn't saying you're not going to pass. He's saying I will not let you pass. So 
even though today we don't use the word shall very often, the meaning of will as this kind of like if you say I will, it expresses determination. That idea is still there. So the difference between will and am going to is that am going to is more objective. It's more certain. It's like a plan. But I will also adds the idea that you really want to and you are trying to do this. So if you say I am going home early, that just means you plan to go home early. No special meaning. But if you say I will go home early, it's like saying and nobody can stop me. I am determined to go home early. Does that answer your question? OK, yeah, like I said, it took me five minutes. Other questions about this page? OK, next page. This is top of page five. Number one, breakfast is an important meal. I, this should be I always eat breakfast. If you say I'm always eating breakfast, that means whenever we see this person, they are always eating breakfast. If you go find them at 3 p.m., they will be eating breakfast. And that's not the meaning. That's not what this person wants to say. They want to say every day they always eat breakfast. Uh, here's a better example for this idea. If you say I'm always talking on the phone, this means whenever you see me, I will probably be talking on my phone. But if you say I always talk on the phone, that means I like talking. I don't like texting. I don't like sending email. It's a general situation when I have to communicate with somebody far away. I always talk on the phone. But if you're trying to look for me and do something with me, it can be hard because I'm always talking on my phone. OK, so simple present is a general situation. Uh, but if you use progressive present like this, it means it's continuing. The action is continuing. And that's not what this person wants. This person simply says every day I eat breakfast, so I always eat breakfast. Two, while I was working in my office yesterday, yesterday in the past, my cousin stopped by to visit me. And remember to add two P's. In English, usually if uh, we're talking about a past tense word that ends with ED. If you only have one P, then it would be stoped, which is not a word. If you want the shorter vowel sound, the AH sound, there should be two P's. So, for example, uh, I need to think of an example. I'm trying to think of a word where one consonant and two consonants both have a meaning. I don't think there is such a word. Um, yeah, I don't know, but the idea is like um, if it looks like this, it is pronounced stoped. But if you add a second P, it is pronounced stopped. This is not a word, by the way. I just can't think of a better example. Uh, and if the pronunciation is different, then the meaning is also different. OK, three, Yuki stayed home. This should be stayed. Stayed home because she caught a bad cold. This is not a word. Number four, my brother looks 
like our father. Look is already a verb, so you don't need to add is. Looks like our father, but I. This is simple present, so this should also be simple present. I resemble my mother. Five, Jun, are you listening? ING, listening to me. I am talking ING to you. So this is happening right now. As I said last week in English, when you talk about something that is happening in the present, you must use present progressive, not simple present. Six, while I was surfing the internet yesterday, I found. So while, so this is a continued action. But in the middle of this action, something happened, and that thing is not a continued action. It is one moment. So I found a really interesting website. The word finding used in progressive ten, uh, aspect is not very common. It does exist. Um, but you probably won't see it very much. It's usually found in the phrase finding one's bearings. And it means trying to figure things out. So finding my bearings at my new job means I was a new person at this job. I wasn't sure what's going on. I was still trying to figure things out. But this is probably the only place you will see the word find as a verb, as a progressive verb. Seven, did you speak, not spoke, speak English before you came here. So this one is easier to understand. Come is present tense. Past tense is came. You don't need the extra word. But the first part. Uh, the original sentence is you spoke English. Now. Um, I mentioned earlier when you do something to a sentence, you move the first word in the verb section to the front. In this case, there is no first word. You only have one word in the verb cluster, right? Subject, verb, object. So you don't have anything to move. In this case, you have to add a word. Now, when you add a word, the tense is carried by the first word. If you remember the uh, grammar from last week, it is always I was, is, will be talking, right? It's always the first verb that tells you the tense. So when you add a new word, it is the first word, the do, that becomes past tense. And then finally, you, now you can move the first word to the front. And that gives you the correct sentence. Uh, and number eight, yesterday while I was working at my computer, Shelly was suddenly coming. That doesn't make sense. How long does it take Shelly to, to come into the room? It should just be simple past tense. Shelly suddenly came into the room. I didn't know she was there. I was concentrating hard on my work. So these two sentences actually go together. I was concentrating. I was continuing to concentrate. Therefore, I didn't know. 
in the middle of concentrating. I could have noticed her, but I did not. So I it's one moment I did not notice. I did not know. When she suddenly spoke. This is the past, right? Suddenly spoke. I jumped to jump just means you were surprised. I jumped. She startled me past tense startled. Questions about uh, the first half? OK, so that was last week's homework. Now let's talk about this week's lesson. Um, I already talked about the uh, perfect and perfect progressive aspects last week. Um, so let me do a very brief review after a short break.
OK, perfect and perfect progressive. Perfect is have, had, have, has, and will have. The main issue with using perfect is when do you use the past and when do you use the perfect? Simple past for so for example. Uh, I went home. This is simple past. What is the difference between I went home and I had gone home, which is past perfect. Both mean that you did something in the past. The difference is that simple past, I went home, has no further meaning. Your only idea is to tell somebody that you went home. If you say I had gone home, that means you have more information that is related to the fact that you went home. There is more to say. For example, I had gone home so the teacher couldn't find me. There is a reason why I'm saying I went home. So using the perfect aspect is when this action. Affects something that happens later. Another example. Can somebody give me a verb, please? Give a Oh, so boring. Another one. Read. Okay. A read is because read is like the it's read read read. It all looks like the same word. Learn. I can use learn. Okay. Um. So, I am learning about grammar. So this is happening right now. But if you say I. That's not a good example. I learned about grammar. I learned about grammar. So this is something that you did. But if you say I have learned about grammar. This means that learning about grammar in some way affects what you're going to say next. I have learned about grammar. I know how complicated it can be. All right, so because you have learned about it, therefore you know how complicated. So the first thing affects the next thing. Uh, now you'll notice that this comparison is between simple past and present perfect. So both meanings are the same that you finished doing something, but in the second sentence, it takes place in the present. You are talking right now, so you would use the present perfect. Remember, Past, present, future is one thing. Simple, progressive, perfect, perfect, progressive is another thing. These are completely separate questions. Uh, so in this example, the person talking would be talking now in the present. Uh, so for example, if I say, I learned about grammar. I'm talking to you now and I'm telling you about something I did in the past. But if I want to tell you because I learned grammar, therefore blah, blah, blah. I would use the perfect aspect have learned, but I would use the present perfect have because we're talking right now. The context is the present. 
Now, if I were writing something, right, not talking, but writing, then it's more likely I would use the past perfect. Because in English, when writing, it's usual to use the past tense. So the difference between present perfect and past perfect is nothing to do with grammar. It's about your context. It's about your situation. Is your entire context in the present or is your entire context in the past? The meaning is the same, but the time is different. Um, OK, now there's one word where it's we usually use the perfect aspect and not the simple past. Become. Become means to transform. A into B. So. Uh, for example, she has become good at English. That's actually a bad example. Hang on. Uh, she has become the best student in class. So before she was not, now she is. There is a transformation. In this case, we usually say has become. We don't say became because there's usually a reason why we say this. Why is it important that we say she has become the best student in class? For example, So I'm mentioning this student as like proof that you too can become good at English. Right, so if she can do this, so can you. If she has become the best student in her class, then you also have a chance to do the same thing. Right, the first sentence affects the next sentence. Um, but of course, the word became still exists, and um, it's usually used when become does not mean transform, it means gradually. So uh, he became sad when the rainy season started. So because the weather is always so bad, he gradually got sadder and sadder. He became sad. This is not a transformation. It's a slow change. Uh, and then finally, there's also a very old meaning of become, which means suits. The dress became here does not mean this woman turned into a dress. It means this woman looks good in the dress. The dress suits her. Uh, that's an older use of the word became. Uh, and we can also talk about this in the future tense, the perfect aspect. Um, I will. Can you give me another verb, please? I give a good answer. Something fun. Okay, how about sleep? I will sleep through English class. Tomorrow. Uh, okay, this needs more context. I, uh, I 
went to bed very late, so I will probably sleep through English class tomorrow. Uh, this should be today, right? Yesterday went to bed, today sleep through. Okay. So this is simple present. Um, if you use not present, sorry, simple future. If you use future perfect, then the fact that you sleep through English class will have some kind of effect on the next thing. So maybe it will look something like this. Let's make this simpler. Can. Can I borrow your homework later? And the reason I'm asking is because I predict that I will probably have slept through English class today. Because I will probably sleep through English class, I will have no idea about the homework. So I want to borrow it from you. It's an order of events, right? Go to bed late. English class, sleep, homework. And the person talking, this person. Already went to bed late. It is now the next morning or I guess noon. Uh, and so the person knows they're probably not going to stay awake during class, so they want to ask their friend if they can borrow homework later. So this action sleeping through class. Affects. The person's need to borrow homework. The first thing affects the next thing. So I will probably have slept through English class today. So as you can see. The main meaning is usually the same or similar if you use have or if you don't use have. The difference is on whether you want to emphasize that one thing affects the next thing. Which means even if you don't add the word have, even if you use the simple past or present or future, not present, simple past or simple future, or present progressive, the other person will probably still understand you. Because the basic meaning is the same, you are only putting a different kind of logical emphasis or chronological emphasis. Uh, chrono chronological means in time order. Um, so the difference can sometimes be quite subtle. Should you use perfect? It depends on what you want to emphasize. OK, do you have questions about the perfect aspect? OK, so the second half is the perfect progressive. Uh, so let's see, I have slept all day versus I have been sleeping all day. Have been sleeping. This is perfect progressive. I have slept all day. The action has finished. Next, we're going to talk about the effect. So the dude slept all day. Now it's night. He can't fall asleep. Right? Pause, effect, action, uh, the next thing. But what about the second one? I have been sleeping all day. This doesn't just tell us that 
the sleeping has finished, it also emphasizes the continuous nature of the sleeping. It is one long action. So the context might be something like this. Right, because the person was sleeping all day continuously. He missed all nine phone calls. Right? You can't add the phone calls thing to the first one because the first one I have slept all day doesn't emphasize that it is continuous. It only emphasizes that it finished. But if you want to emphasize that it is continuing and it finished, then you would say, I have been sleeping. Present, oh, sorry, perfect progressive. Let's do another one. Somebody give me another verb. Take it with a Think. Let me think. Mm, okay, yes, I can use this. Um, we have thought about your uh, situation versus we have been thinking about your situation. We have thought about your situation, so the thinking has been finished. Uh, so after thinking, you probably have a conclusion. Uh, not to uh, Uh, no, no, let's be positive. We decided to give you another chance, right? So we have thought, we have finished, the decision is here. But we have been thinking about your situation. Um, it was a tough decision, but we decided not to give you another chance. So again, the meaning of these two sentences is very similar, right? There's a thinking and there's a decision. One sentence says yes, the other sentence says no. In terms of the verb, in terms of the time, Simply saying we have thought about your situation just says, OK, we did think about it. But if you say we have been thinking about your situation, this emphasizes that we took a long time. We spent a lot of effort thinking about your situation. We continued to think for a long time and now we have finished. So, in fact, it's better to use the perfect progressive when you're saying no. Because you're emphasizing it was a tough decision. We don't say no easily. We thought really hard about it. We spent a long time thinking about it. Something similar in Chinese too, right? Uh, like, for example, the first one might be and the second one might be right, so you can feel the emphasis on uh, a good situation can uh, be the result of like a faster thinking process, whereas a negative situation or negative decision you want to emphasize that it was not easy to get to this decision. 
And so to emphasize how long and continuous you were thinking about it, you would use the perfect progressive. Uh, and we can also have examples from the past and the future, right? Um, yeah, so just like we came up with examples for the perfect aspect from the past and the future, you can also use the perfect progressive for the past and the future. Overall, the perfect progressive is slightly less common, but there are some situations where it does make the most sense. OK, do you have questions about the perfect progressive? All right, let's take a look at page five, second half. So this one is about past tense verbs. Could be simple past, could be past progressive, could be perfect aspect, either present perfect or past perfect. Hmm. I think I only gave you the first half. That's weird. OK, whatever. Let's see how many mistakes you can find in this part. Um, I will give you seven minutes and then we will compare answers.
Okay. It's not easy, right? Some of you might be thinking, why so hard? Uh, and this is because I'm trying to prepare you for the exams. Uh, the exams, I will also give you one paragraph, but I will tell you that each line only has one mistake. So it's a little bit easier than this practice question. But the bigger question is, why are the exams so hard? And this is because in this class, my goal is to help you notice your grammar mistakes in your writing. If you don't see your mistakes, how can you fix them? OK, some of you are thinking ChatGPT and yes, ChatGPT can help fix most of your grammar mistakes, but not all of them. And what if after ChatGPT fixes your mistakes, you want to change your writing a little bit here, a little bit there? If you're writing 20 pages, are you going to copy all 20 pages and run them through AI again? You could, but then you'd have to double check all 20 pages because AI is not a grammar machine. It could mix things up. It could change what you're doing somehow. In fact, that happened to me uh, like two months ago. Um, I was trying to read a paper uh, a research paper in French. I don't know French. I'm basically guessing, but it was 20. It was around 15 pages. I did not want to guess for 15 pages, so I uploaded it to ChatGPT and said, please translate this into English. I use the free version, uh, so it translated the first page and then it, uh, it stopped. It didn't ask me, do you want me to continue? It just stopped. So I said, please continue. And then it translated another page and stopped. And I said, please continue. And after, in the, by the end of the whole translation, I could tell that it's skipping things, that it wasn't really translating, it was summarizing. And in fact, it wasn't even summarizing accurately. It was just making shit up. So uh, it's not like, ChatGPT does a better job of correcting grammar than it does translating. It's the same logic. The AI does not know what it's doing. So you ask it to correct, you ask it to translate, you ask it a question, it's all the same. It's not trustworthy. So you do have to have some grammar skills, and that's what I'm training you to do. When you read your own writing, can you notice your grammar mistakes? I don't really care if you make grammar mistakes as long as you can fix them. And that's why we are doing all of these editing questions, catching mistakes, ma uh, making them correct. OK, so let's take a look at this section. Uh, the first one, it says today, so it should be present perfect, not past perfect, because today, uh, I just had to write it. It's our three year anniversary. Sejun and I are married three years as of today. This R is not correct. What should this be? Zhen Xiaoqi. So, Instead of R, what should this be? Yes, we, sorry, and I have been married. Still present. Have is present tense. But you emphasize it is completed but now. So maybe this is the time for me to take stock of my situation. The obvious question is whether I'm happy I got married. The answer is absolutely. When I remember what my life has been like before we were married. This has been is wrong. So what should this be? 
Han Jingwei. Yes. So not has been. What should it be? Let me give you a hint. Before we were married. So not present perfect. It should be past perfect, right? Before is in the past. So my life had been like. Okay. Okay, good. I realize now how lonely I've been before. Again, this I've is wrong. What is the correct version? Yes, I. Here, how lonely I've been. This I've is wrong. What is the correct one? Yes, I had been. Again, same reason, before, so past tense. Uh, past perfect. I used to have, this is also wrong, not used to. What should this be? Zhen Yuting. Yes. Good. Past tense. Used to have in the past. Uh, now, in this case, it doesn't matter whether you're talking about the past, present, or future, because this is actually a shorter version of be used to. Which means it's normal to me. I already have this habit. Um, so this is a phrase. It's not due to past, present, or future. Used to. I used to have some problems with his family, but now I really gotten to know them. Oh, I really gotten. This is wrong. Uh, what is the correct version? Uh, Francis Jota. Larissa. Yes, what should this be? Okay, so if we keep the present tense, then yes, it would be I really get to. But this is saying in the past I had problems, but now I don't because I really uh, know them. So the correct one should be I have really gotten to know them. After I finished getting to know them, now I don't have problems. Okay? So this affects uh, what comes after. Get to know them, no problems. Cause, effect. I love spending time with them. I've even learned some Korean. Okay, there is a problem here also. I've even learned some Korean is wrong. What is the correct version? Eliza. Eliza, you, yeah, so what should this be? I am even learning some Korean could work. Um, but here, let's see if we can make a smaller change that also would make sense. Do you have another answer? Good. I've even learned some Korean. Learn, learned, learned. The past participle, the third version, is ed, learned, have learned. And Sejun is a wonderful guy. When we were dating, I didn't know how he will behave after we got married. This is wrong. How he will behave. This is wrong. What should it be instead? Wei Ching Mong. Good. How he would behave. 
this entire sentence is in the past. I didn't know, past tense. Last week we mentioned if you have to talk about the future inside the past, use would. So I will do it tomorrow. Uh, that's a bad example. Uh, I would do it. Yeah, it's a bad example because it looks exactly the same. Um, let me think of a better example. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. So, um, teacher has told me the homework. I will do it tomorrow. And my teacher had told me the homework. So the first sentence happens in the present. So in the future from now is simple future. The second sentence happens in the past. So the future of the past is would. Okay. I thought I'll have to do all the housework. There's also a problem here. What is the correct version? Santoyan. So it's not, I thought I'll have to. Okay, let me give you a hint. I thought is in the past. Well, here it, it's supposed to be in the past, so it's not I'll. If we're in the past and we talk about the future, it's good, I would, not I will, I would. Or you can just say, I'd. Uh, and then there's one last mistake, but you probably don't see it because the sentence is cut off in the middle. This should be, I didn't have any reason. I wasn't having any reason. Why would you emphasize you are continuing not to have any reason? There's no reason that this should continue. Uh, in this kind of sentence structure, there's only one case where you would use having. So if somebody is doing something that is like annoying or harmful to you and you reject that person's actions, you, would, you could say, I wasn't having any of it or I wasn't taking any of it. This is the only place you will see uh, the construction was having or wasn't having. OK, I guess there's another one, right? If you use have to eat. I wasn't having cake. So did you saw somebody eating cake? Wasn't me. I wasn't having cake. Have means to eat. But like these are the only two places you will see this kind of sentence structure. Uh, regular have. Uh, you wouldn't see a progressive aspect. Okay, do you have questions about this paragraph or this part of the essay? 
OK, homework. Please finish up to the end of page eight. So pages six, seven and eight, the whole page. OK, see you next week. If you haven't signed in, if you haven't signed in, please come and sign in.